Now you have diatonic harmony. You've got triads, we've talked about that. One chord's major, two and a three are minor, four and five are major, six is a minor, and then your seven chord is a diminished chord, right? We don't talk about that much. Then you can extend the chords to diatonic seventh chords. When you do that, you get major seven for the one, minor seven for the two and the three, major seven for the four, dominant seven for the five, minor seven for the six, minor seven flat five for the seven. When you start aligning seconds and thirds in different intervals and in different patterns, you get these diatonic seventh chords. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next few lessons. I'm going to throw them at you quickly. There's no reason for me to demonstrate these. That's for you to play around with. Look at diagram five, our first chord. Now, if we play that over an E bass, I'm not going to use the jam track right now. If I play it over an E bass, I hear an E6. A close voicing E6, because I've got a three, five, a six, and a one. If I play it over an F sharp bass, I've got a different harmony. You can analyze it over, over the G sharp bass note. It still sounds like that E6. I've just got the third and the bass. Over the A bass, I've got a beautiful A major nine. And over the B bass. great sounds over the C-sharp. That sounds real stable, doesn't it? It's because it's a C-sharp minor 7. Okay. So as I move these through, I'm really going to view these, one way I could view them, as diatonic 7th chords in 2nd inversion. It means the 5th is the lowest tone. So if I look at this and I say, well, that's really a C-sharp minor 7 chord. I can use it as an E6, I can use it as an A major 9, but as a starting point, I might view it that way. And then if I know what my diatonic 7th chords are, then it makes it a little easier. So I know, okay, I'm on the 6th chord because I'm in the key of E, so there's my C sharp minor 7. Next I move up, okay, there's my B minor, excuse me, my D sharp minor 7 flat 5, which is really the B9 chord. And then when I move up, There's my E major 7 chord. Now, that particular fingering, that's the third one in the series of diagram 5, you can play it like that, but again, you're on the corners of your nails, it's pretty stretched up, and that's about as low as you'd play it on the neck, and it's real radical. This is one of those chords that you can play another way. You flip the voices, so instead of playing B, D sharp, E, G sharp, you play B, E, D sharp, G sharp. So you can... It's a great major seven voicing in second inversion. Got the five as the lowest tone. So anyway, I've got this. Then I move up. Oh, same patterns I had for the C sharp, right? Okay, well that makes sense because I'm on F sharp. F sharp minor seven is my two chord in the key of E. G sharp minor seven is my three chord. Then I'm back to this major seven shape over here again, right? Get my intonation going out because I'm hitting the horn. I need to get a chainsaw out. So I'll use, use that voicing. That. And so on. Then I find... There's my B7. Again, you might just play these using adjacent three-note grooves. Here I'm going up the diatonic triads. Those are real inside voicings, meaning they're very tonal. You don't have these dissonances because the second is occurring in a, a good location. All right, so there you have a third, a second and a third, diatonic seventh chords and second inversion.